Hi, James here from Harry and Pearl Go to an Orange Rock. Um, I took some photographs uh, of um, the Milky Way while I was on the trip and quite a few people liked them. Um, and what I'm going to do in this video is show you how uh, I edit the raw image from the camera uh, to produce the, the good good quality shots. Now the, the camera is itself is actually quite a, quite a fairly standard uh, prosumer level digital SLR. It's just a Canon 6D um, with some good glass, um, a 24mm lens. And this is something which anybody can do who's got a digital SLR. Uh, so follow along and hopefully um, you will learn. Uh, but just as a pre-warning, um, I'm kind of self-taught, so there's probably better ways to do this and probably um, uh, more efficient ways to do it. Uh, and so, but it seems to work for me. Yeah, so. But uh, yeah, so the first thing is I'm going to show you the photograph that um, we're going to be editing. Uh, it's a photograph that I took in Kingunya um, in uh, South Australia. Um, this is the JPEG version of it. Um, and as you can see, you can see the Milky Way here, stars quite good, um, foreground, it's all right. It's not the best photograph in the world, to be honest, but it will um, be good for this demonstration. It's a bit dark, um, it's a bit flat, um, it doesn't really pop out at you. Um, Although, you know, this is what comes straight out of the camera. Now, there's a difference between, um, I'm going to drag this across here so you can see, <clears throat> between the JPEG and this is the raw image from the camera. That's a CR2 file. Uh, and this image has got far more information in it than the standard JPEG uh, image does. Um, this image is a 14-bit depth image and it's 21.5 megabytes in size and this one's only 4.7. So this one's got about five times as much information in it as the other one. So if I open it up by double clicking on it and it'll open up in Photoshop, there we go. It looks very similar uh, to the JPEG. If actually it probably looks even more flat than the JPEG and that's that's quite normal. And that's because um, the camera itself, and it helps that you understand this, the camera itself does quite a lot of post-processing internally um, to basically make a photograph look like what the human eye sees it as. Um, your brain does a lot of post-processing itself internally. Um, it will uh, automatically do a white balance. Um, it will automatically adjust for contrast and things like that. So if you take a photograph of somebody with a very bright background, you either get the person's face or you get the background, but you never get both. Uh, but if you look at that person with your eyes, you actually can see both. And that's because the eye adjusts and your brain compensates for it. Using RAW allows us to do the same kind of thing that the human brain does to the camera, uh, to the photograph. Okay, so this is the photo that we're going to be looking at. Uh, the first thing I do whenever I look at um, uh, photos is decide, is it worth actually doing anything to this photo? And to do that, I'll look up here at the histogram. Um, the first thing you'll notice in the histogram is the left-hand side is the dark stuff and the right-hand side is the very, very light stuff. So most of this photograph is in the dark side. However, it's not right down the very end. Similarly, there's only a few little parts of the photograph which are right up the very high end. So this is good. This means that we can do a fair bit with the photo. If there was a lot right up the very high end, then essentially it would be pure white or pure red, blue or green. Um, and it, there was there's no way we can extract any information from it. You can check that by clicking the highlight button and you can see the bits which are in this case pure red and there's no way we can extract any more information from, from those parts of the photo. That's not good, but fortunately it's only a small part. Uh, and there's basically no parts which are um, pure black, so that's good. Okay, so once we've decided that this is a pretty good photograph to be editing, the first thing I'll do is crop it. Oh, I've already done it, so there you go. Uh, just to straighten it up because the original photograph was a little bit, uh, on the tripod was a little bit wonky. So I just straighten it up a little bit, I'm just going to adjust that. Hold the shift key down to make sure we maintain aspect ratio when we're cropping, and there you go. Okie dokie. So, next thing I'll do is um, just do some lens corrections. The camera I've shot this with is a Canon 6D. The lens is a 24mm uh, L-series prime. Um, and what uh, it has is, is some vignetting and some barrel distortion. So I'll remove that by enabling profile corrections. And if I just toggle this, you'll see what it's doing. The vignetting is the darkening around the border. <coughs> And the barrel distortion is it looks kind of like a bit pin, uh, uh, like pushed up and it can be distorted, so therefore uh, 
Adobe Photoshop internally has a profile of that particular lens, which is that one, L Series Prime, and we'll remove it. Also, if we zoom in here, you'll see that there's a little bit of, um, well, there's actually two things here. There's a bit of chromatic aberration on the edges, but there's also a bit of chromatic aberration on the stars. And we can remove the chromatic aberration by removing chromatic aberration. Not hard. Um, I tend to make sure that the purple uh, defringe amounts around five or six. I uh, seem to find that, that gets the best result. The chromatic aberration, which I'm going to pan over here, and you can see it here quite clearly on these stars, uh, is due to a very wide aperture. Uh, and there's very little I can do about that. There's basically nothing I can do about that. Um, you just have to either crop it out or live with it. And you can see that the aperture in this case was 2.2, which is really quite wide. Um, really, I should have shot it with a, um, a, a, a smaller aperture, um, maybe around 3.2 or even 5 uh, plus. Um, actually, if you look here, there, that black dot is noise removal um, from the automatic noise removal. It was a hot pixel. Okay, right. So now we've co um, uh, corrected for the lens um, uh, problems, uh, which you have to do to every single photo. Um, I now just adjust the, the exposure a bit try and pump it up a little bit, not too much. We don't want to make it too bright, and we're going to do a fair bit to it later as well. Um, about half a stop. I'm going to increase the vibrance. I'm going to increase the um, saturation as well. This just makes the, the colors pop a little bit. Um, I find that uh, the automatic white balance in the camera tends to um, make it a little bit warmer than it actually is. So I normally change the white balance, not from as shot. I drop it down to about 30. 800 Kelvin, um, and I find that that's a bit bluer and it, it kind of brings the colors back to really where they should be. Um, you play around with this a bit to, to get to the point where you, you see the whites as being actually white rather than uh, orangish or bluish. Okay. Okay. So now we've done that, we're going to use the graduated, um, uh, graduated filter tool, and I'm going to put a graduated filter here. Now you notice that it's hard to actually get it straight. If you hold down the shift key, that will actually make sure it stays straight. <clears throat> Once I've got the graduated filter, I'm going to get rid of any pre-existing settings that I have in there. Um, and I'm going to bump the exposure of the stars up a little bit. I'm going to drop the highlight of the stars, uh, drop the blacks, and importantly, increase the clarity. I'm going to do that a little bit more. And increase the contrast. Might actually highlight is probably a little bit too much. Drop the shadows a little bit because what I'm trying to do is make the black black and the um, uh, the stars really pop out. Uh, Dehazing sometimes helps a bit with star photos, especially when you're um, close to the um, <coughs> close to. Uh, <coughs> the sea where uh, humidity tends to increase. What you're looking for, by the way, when you're taking star photos is low humidity, cold nights, because that re reduces thermal distortions. Um, and you're looking for, obviously, a moonless night, uh, ideally, uh, and ideally a new moon, because even if uh, there is a moon and it's below the horizon, it'll still light up the atmosphere. Um, bump the saturation a little bit with the stars, <coughs> uh, and that's about it. Okay, there's probably more you could do here, but I'm going to just do it really quickly. And I want to show the point of this is to show you what can be done rather than what uh, will be done. I'm going to just accidentally close that, so I'll reopen it. And the other thing about the beauty about working in RAW is uh, you never lose, you're, you're, you're never damaging the photo, so you're never actually losing anything. You're just applying filters to the original. Okay, so now we've uh, come back here. Now we're going to apply a different gradiated filter, but to the foreground this time. Uh, again, I'm going to remove all of these settings uh, that were used on the stars. And I'm, look, I'm just, I don't have any set uh, numbers I put in here. I just kind of have a play with it and see what um, what works and what doesn't. So, but for the foreground, I'm going to increase the uh, shadows. I'm going to increase the um, the exposure a bit more here as well, but you can see there's a fair bit of noise there, so that's not great. Um, I'm going to increase the clarity a little bit, a little bit, not too much. Contrast, um, uh, and yeah, that looks pretty good. But you can see I've really blown out those lights there. That's fine. There's a way of getting getting those back as well. 
Okay, so to get those lights back and get that bit back, I'm going to burn in just those areas. So this is actually something that you would have done years and years ago in the um, darkroom, um, but you can do it now here as well. Okay, so that's just dropping the exposure just for this little part using um, the, the adjustment brush tool. As I said, this isn't the greatest photo. If you look here, that, that's really quite out of focus and there's some nasty chromatic aberration there, but yeah. Okay, so finally, um, if you zoom in a little bit, you'll notice that um, there's probably a fair bit of noise in this. It was shot at ISO 1000, which is not great. So therefore, I'm going to remove that noise by doing some uh, luminance and also some color noise reduction. Um, the color noise reduction is probably the most important for long exposures. As you can see, it's quite it's quite a bit of color noise in there. Um, uh, the luminous, uh, yeah, that's also important, but it's not as critical. Um, you can see, yeah. Okay, if you don't you don't want to put too much, otherwise it ends up making the whole thing look like it's got a whole pile of JPEG artifacts, and that's not what you want. Uh, we want to sharpen it a bit, okay, and that also brings out some of the smaller stars. Okay, and just hold down the hold down the space key and left click, and that will allow you to pan around the photo really quickly. And just look. This I'm not sure whether you can see. There's a slight blurring. That's a motion blur because the um, photograph was taken over 30 seconds, um, uh, and the stars moved. Um, and that's that's quite normal. If you take a longer exposure, it's obviously going to move more. Um, and the the stars closer to the uh, galactic. Uh, pole will, uh, sorry, the, the celestial pole will not um, obviously move as far. All right, whereas this stuff here is that's chromatic aberration. And that's about it. So let's um, zoom back up. There you go. There's a fairly large difference, and I'm going to open that image in Photoshop. Okay, do, 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 do. Peter's running super fast. Mind you, these are fairly large um, pictures, so. Yep, and then in Photoshop, uh, I always never publish the full size image for a couple of reasons. One, you don't want people to steal them, um, and if you've got the full size image, then that's a safe thing. But also with 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 star late night star photos, because of the amount of noise is really not worth it. So so drop the um, image size by about fifty percent, and then apply a um, unsharp mask, just a fairly light unsharp mask filter to it, just to really bring it bring it back. Okay. And there you go. So I just save that. And what I will do is I will add this hopefully to the end of the video. Oh, it already exists. That's not good. Let's call it M1. Save. And we'll zoom in. No one's going to ask me to do that. And da -da 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 -da. There you go. Look at that. Beautiful. The sharpness of the stars. It looks great. And that's what we're really after. Okay, hope that helped guys. Cheers.